Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program, and welcome back to Iconic Spacecraft. This is episode 2, and in today's episode, not only are we going to be making a Viper from Battlestar Galactica, but we are also going to be recording in 1080p. Gonna see how this works. This is not only because I feel like, hey, I can give you guys higher quality, but also because it's actually strangely more convenient for me. Um, but there's no need for me to go into how it is. So, so the Viper. It's quite a nice looking craft. And in fact, no, we don't need to be in the VAB. We need to be in the space plane hangar. There we go. So the reason for this is because I want to build something quite ambitious. I want to actually build a battle star. Um, the emphasis would be more on the launch tubes and the, you know, the landing tubes and everything. But I would like to see if I can make some sort of interplanetary fleet vessel and and to do that we need to have some ships for to land in it so hence the viper in episode two so we're gonna head straight into this and see how we can build it first thing that comes to mind is obviously what cockpit we have to choose and unfortunately it's gonna have to be this one there is really no doubting that that is the most it's just literally the only one we can really choose unfortunately this means there's gonna be no inner cockpit view uh, which is a shame. I really hope Squad fix that. Or, well, not necessarily fix, it's not broken, it's just not there yet. I really hope they add that in. Okay, we'll do the nose first. So, simply just to have any fuel, it's kind of going to have to be fuel tanks, isn't it? We'll have advanced SAS. Or should that be behind? Yeah, it should probably be behind it. So, we'll have fuel. <laughs> okay. Yes, we'll, we'll use this one. And in fact, if we rotate this, there we go, that looks alright. And we should put a nose cone on it. Uh, do we just do this? That ends a bit quickly, doesn't it? Do we need to perhaps do this? Hey, that's not bad. That does the, that's the stripe thing pretty well, actually. And the thing is, the, the right to the tip of the nose cone is actually an air intake, but from we don't have any small enough intakes, really. So, we could model an intake like that, <laughs> and that would actually be quite useful. Um, although, although we can't just dock it into the ship like that, because if we do, then we won't be able to bring it out uh, in the same way. Oh, actually, there, ah, there might be ways around this. If I think on a bigger scale, I could potentially... You know what? There's nothing else useful I could put there, so okay, that's going to be there. I'm not sure how much sense I'm making, but uh, I think that is, that is worthwhile because of reasons that may become apparent in the future. And I've already had an idea how I want to do the engines. I mean, you would imagine they would be tricoupler, but in reality, the bottom two engines are actually on the same level. And it's gonna be it's a space fighter, so it needs to be LV 99s. So that would work, and that would actually put the thrust uh, along the center of mass. But those engines are too low; the entire thing is a bit too. I don't really like that. So what I thought I could do was perhaps, and also this would make the uh, you know the whole top bit where it seems to have intakes up there on the engines instead of having it smoothly go out like that. If we take a strut here, and take a strut there, and then we can put on some fuel tanks, like that. So you kind of get the, the effect, if you get me. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And then from there, we can just put things on the side, like this, to do a similar, similar way of doing things. Like that. Um, well, it would be if we had two times symmetry on. And then we can rotate it in. Like that. A bit too far out, but you get my meaning. Um, I think that works. I think that would work, actually work. So we want to bring it in as much as possible. Which means doing it a bit like this, methinks. Perhaps there. That's not bad. Again, two times symmetry. It keeps on going off. There. 
that's not bad. That's quite compact and it's quite nice. We will have to turn on part clipping, by the way. So that's Alt F12 to bring up that debug menu and just select that part clipping option. And we'll now put on our LV LV99s. Oh, there and there. There we go. And we end up still with our center of thrust basically along the center of mass. It's not actually that bad. For some reason, I think the nose is too long, but I don't know. I like the stripe. I like the fact that we can actually get a stripe. We can't. No, that doesn't have a stripe on it, does it? These don't, I suppose. No. No, I. It might be a bit long, but I think it's okay. Um. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're going to keep them. We're going to keep them like that because those work. All right. Uh, one thing we would like is RCS fuel because we are going to be doing maneuvers. So like that. Does that disrupt the texture too much? We could potentially hide RCS like underneath here. Let me try that as an alternative because to be honest, I don't really want to make the nose any longer than it already is. It's pretty damn long. What I was thinking, perhaps, is down here. Hidden right below the chassis. That is not bad. That's not a bad alternative. Breaks the laws of physics, you know. <laughs> Having tanks inside one another and everything being okay. But, mm, yeah. Yeah, that's alright. That's not bad. Is that enough fuel? Uh, we always want to have more, don't we? Copious amounts. There we go, four tanks on the underbelly. That's good, That's I, I quite like that. Okay, so with our slightly misscaled ship, now we, we shall plow on ahead. As for the top winglet, uh, do, we actually want, do we actually want a winglet or do we want a small hard point? A, that's floating, which is a bit odd. Yeah, that's actually gonna float, there's Nothing I can do about that. And B, it seems a bit too small. It is definitely a bit too small, actually. How about a structural pylon? Where is the structural pylon? Right there. That's a bit weird, isn't it? That's a bit... It's not very wing-like-ish, if you catch my drift. And that just looks silly. We can't tilt it, no? Hang on. Attack you and come back here. No, 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 no. No, maybe we'll just set up for a small hard point. Maybe we shall. Or maybe we'll set for that. It's a bit tall though, and that will cause problems. Yeah, the taller we have something on top, the less, uh, the well, the bigger we're going to have to make the launch tube when we eventually get around to making the Galactica. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have it like that. That's just a little tip of the hat to show that we recognise there should have been something up here. <laughs> and now onto the wings, potentially probably the hardest thing to get right actually. Seeing as this is going to be used in space, I mean it can be used in uh, in atmosphere. The vipers themselves in both the story and physically can be used in atmosphere, but... Hey, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Can we maybe put something... That's not bad. We might just keep it anyway, even though it looks a bit weird. Hmm. That's seven. I think I think that is definitely better than the what we had previously. It works a bit better. There we go. That doesn't look bad. Still, just want to try and make as much improvement to the thing as possible. Yeah! Yeah, if we spend too much time on this, then it's just going to... Yeah, we're going to end up doing something wrong. So, I think we can settle for that. I think we can settle for how those wings look. I don't really like it that much, but I can't see a way to improve it past that. So, that is basically it. Now we actually need to make it work. I think... Although, there are guns. Maybe we should put something in there about the guns. Ah, I don't know. No, I prefer the other struts, actually. Um, radioactive nuclear generators. 
they could definitely be guns, couldn't they? Lasers. Although I don't, I actually believe the weapons in the Vipers aren't lasers; they're kinetic. If you look at the fight scenes, um, hmm. Uh, come back this way. There. Ah, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't sit quite as well as the other strut did. I think that strut might actually be best. Our uh, our be, 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 be our best bet. That's actually quite possible. Uh, come on, there's got to be something. What about those small fuel tanks? If I put a strut. That that is actually not bad. I'm going to keep it like that. Th those are our weapons. <laughs> Mounds onto the side of these terrible wings. Okay. Okay, that is our Viper, pretty much the aesthetic of the Viper made. I don't think there's much more I'm going to do with it. And the idea, as I was kind of mumbling to myself earlier, the idea is that we, we go in, we come into the launch tube. Ah, thrusters, I need thrusters. We'll, we'll make it functional in a second. But the idea is we fly into the launch tube. Not at a very high velocity, because otherwise we're going to break something. And then we slow down using RCS, and we go up. We go. We literally translate upwards, and we can dock onto a higher piece, and dock onto a little area with the front docking port. And then when we when we want to launch, we'll drop down from that little compartment, and we can fly out the other end of the tube. I think that makes sense in in my own world. Okay, now we need to make it functional, and that involves center of mass, and it involves fuel. Okay, we'll do thrusters first, uh, because thrusters take priority over fuel flow. So, so, if we have right on the center of mass, one thruster either side, so that we get our forwards and backwards uh, thrusting capability. They seem a bit tilted. Just there. Yeah, okay, so thrusters just on the side. And then we're actually going to use the linear thrusters, because they're more conspicuous. Or less less conspicuous, more inconspicuous. And we're going to have them on the top. Right? Does that work? I mean, technically, we have all axes here, just in these two. You know what? I think we probably don't need any more than that. Although, in the fight scenes, you do see them have thrusters there. Just for aesthetic, they do actually have them. Well, no, in the film they have them because they have them, but for our case we might just have them there as aesthetic. And we can put some some back here. <laughs> put them everywhere, it's fine. Yeah, I, I want to have them there because I know, I specifically know, they have two jets there. And then we can always turn them off in flight if they actually don't help. I'm just wondering if these two thrusters are going to be strong enough. It will take a bit of delicate movement. Um, I might just go with the flow. Put two thrusters on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on. I think that works. I think that looks good enough. That definitely looks like a fighter jet of some description. Or a fighter spaceship. Come on. I know the connection points there. There! There's the connection points. Beautiful. Okay, and we're going to need one more of those. Right there. So if we bring fuel from here into that, then the fuel can go and split off in all directions. Because these struts can cross feed of sorts. Uh, if we can just go straight from there to there. Yes, we can. Okay. I don't know how much that's going to work. Let me just try again. Just to see if I can get it. There, that actually doesn't look... That's actually fairly concealed. I mean, of course you can see it, but... You're never going to be able to hide it completely. Going from the fuel into this strut here. And then from this strut, we have... One connection... Come on. Give us a wave. One, one connection there, straight up into this tank. And we have connections on either side, like that, going up into these tanks. Hang on. Just going up right into there. Ah, that's a bit jagged, isn't it? 
Come on, I want you to just make a straight connection. Straight connection for me. Straight connection. Just about... Oh, come on, get my keen bindings wrong. I forget the, the controls differ between VAB and elsewhere. Uh, one way we can probably improve that is by doing that. Just flipping it over and there. No, nope, okay, that does exactly the same thing. Flip it over again. Does exactly the same thing. I don't think we're going to be able to avoid that, frankly. Um, but we've avoided too much mishap. I mean, it doesn't really ruin the idea of the Viper, especially not if you're at this camera angle. Yeah, there we go. We've we've made we've made a Viper, and it should be functional. Of course, the final thing we want is landing gear, and I've had some ideas for landing gear as well, but. The crux of it, of course, will just be two wheels there and one wheel here. But it makes it a bit high, don't you think? Also, also these fuel tanks aren't at the correct, or they aren't at perfect height. They are, in fact, slightly lower than the main the main body nose. So if I can just put them out like that, maybe just one more. In fact, the way we can tell is if we drag the ship down to the base just so this wheel is touching the floor, the front one that is. That's just touching. And those two are not quite just 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 touching. Would that count as just touching there? Um they're still a bit still a bit higher actually aren't they? If we just put them Is that okay? I think that's okay. And I think that works fine. So we have so we have some uh, some landing gear. Now in the actual Viper they are they are VTOLs. And instead of landing gear like wheels, they have landing legs. But unfortunately we can't really do that because our landing legs are all big, clunky and swing out rather than being vertical uh, telescopic legs. So landing gear works, I think, and it will also help for exiting and exiting the tube, which which potentially could be problematic. Now another thing I was thinking of, what I mentioned, is if I actually had like a landing gear up here, it would look terrible. That's basically it. <laughs> what I could do is it would mean that we'd have some sort of stability against the roof of the tube. That might not be bad. I'm going to leave it there just to see if it's too intrusive. Um, we could potentially... Can we actually put... Oh, we can actually put it on there. Ooh. Okay. That suddenly makes it actually potentially useful for aesthetics. If we have that up on there. And we bring it back to about there. It pushes it up slightly. And depending on how it looks when it comes in and out, uh, that could be very useful. So what we have now is we would have wheels on the floor, we'd have a wheel up at the top. And, you know, we could also have... Ah, uh, we can't have wheels. Oh, we could have wheels there. <laughs> wheels everywhere! If you don't understand, I'm, I'm trying to make it so that it won't collapse. Or it won't crash into the sides of the launch tube. It'll just fit nicely in and the wheels will keep it stationary in one position. <laughs> Funny how the arrow keys make us rotate as well as going through the text. Battle Star, uh, excuse me, Battle Star Viper Mark One. Save and launch. Now, what did I say? What did I say as soon as I started this? I was like, "Oh, this is no, never going to work in atmosphere." Well, we're going to do two tests because we need to see if the actual fuel flow works and everything. So, first of all, we're going to try and fly in atmosphere for the lols because we know it won't work. Uh, custom wants to close them. Close, close them. Custom one. There we go. Takes a bit of working somehow. That's not bad. That. Why is it lagging though? Is it? Oh, because I'm recording in 1080p. Makes things a bit slower. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that's a problem or not. It isn't a particularly high frame rate, is it? We'll see. We'll see. Um. So we have, we have this up here, which doesn't look that bad. All our landing gear closed, apart from the ones we need, and we're going to try and take off. <laughs> uh, because we can 
Trying to lift off. Trying, trying to pull up. Nothing coming of it as of yet. Our thrust is actually a bit higher than centre of mass, so I wouldn't expect it to work. Oh, and we've come off the edge. Oh, 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 and and we are slow, painful death. Yeah, that's never going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, as our final bit of testing, I'm going to open up that same developer console that we used earlier on with Alt F12. And not only are we going to allow part clipping in editors, we're also going to hack gravity. There we go. So now we are basically in space. That is the representation of space, the final frontier. And if we press K, we can go up. Um, we can try to. Of course, our RCS is offset. Close them, damn you. Okay, close them. We're going to close the normal landing gear as well. Come on, close them. We want to turn off the front nose things. There we go, turn them off. And there we go, okay. So, so <laughs> this looks pretty funny. Um, yes, we have our, our, our RCS is clearly able to translate us down, up, backwards, and forwards. That's not a problem. Start the engines and fire. And yeah, that is not half bad. It certainly looks quite good. I think I think we have done a fairly good job here today, gentlemen. Certainly not a bad one. Um, and ladies, and ladies, and any ladies who may be watching this. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. Let me try and get a good a good lineup. So what are the, what are the only problems with it really? The uh, I'm pretty sure the nose is definitely too long. Instead of doing a too long fuel tank, it probably needed a one and a half. Although we can justify that because the the stripe. <laughs> and also, you know, more fuel the better. Um, the weapons are probably as functional as we could have possibly made them. The wings don't look particularly great, um, but in contrast, the engines look quite good. The fuel flow works, or seems to work, yep, it does seem to work quite effectively. Fuel going down here and up through those, yeah, it doesn't look bad. It does not look bad. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Battlestar Viper. In the next episode, well, maybe not the next episode, maybe we'll have one before that, but in the future, we shall be making the actual Galactica itself, and we'll be putting the Viper inside it. If you want to leave suggestions for iconic craft for me to try and emulate in the Kerbal Space Program, please do leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video, this episode of the iconic spacecraft series, and I shall see you all next time.